Affirmative. We shall be perfect. Stork v Hydra. Group B Pathfinder is the map. And another freaking deciding game. And that may make me very sad. Oh, Stork, of course. Of course you're not wearing your glasses. Why would you? Why would you want to win in a tournament? That's, winning is not what it's all about, man. It's about losing. He knows the secret. Why you gotta do this to me, man? Yeah, but he is going up against freaking Hydra. Oh. <laughs> okay, pull it together. Going against Hydra on Pathfinder without his glasses. But alright, if Stork wins, he's going to force a lower rung tiebreaker. Ha uh, Flash, rather, has already moved out of this group. So yeah, Stork will... If he wins, he'll be able to force a tiebreaker between Shine, Hydra, and himself. Which would still be a very difficult tiebreaker to break out of. But here we go. Except, down at the 5 o'clock position in yellow or beige. Looks like beige is Hydra. Scouting up to the right direction. 12 o'clock, orange or something is Stork. Cyclops Zerg. Monocle Zerg coming for you. But if Hydra wins, Flash and Hydra are going to be the two players to move out of this group. Which, uh... I would say it would be a crime against humanity just because Stork is my favorite player, but really, it's not a crime against humanity. Uh, Flash and Hydra are both one of the, two of the top players on the scene. I want Stork to move out. I really do. I want him to do it, but the odds are so powerfully stacked against him right now. Uh, let's think about this. He's not wearing his glasses. That's one strike against him. He's on Pathfinder, which isn't great for Protoss against Zerg. That's another strike. He's playing Hydra, who is fantastic. Third strike. And, yeah, even if he forces a tiebreaker, he's going to fight Shine, his arch nemesis, and the bane of his existence, and Hydra again. So, I, yeah, my heart's already been broken. I am completely immune to this game, I think. I've gone through enough ice cream. I've eaten my way through to the other side, man. I am okay. But luckily, Stork, it seems, is going for a Forge Fast Expand. Let's hope he does. I don't know what's been going on in Protoss' brains as of late when they think that going gateway first is a good idea, but I haven't seen it work. Any of the times it's happened recently. That is what killed the game for CJ Entis against KT Rolster. Uh, in the playoffs in the Pro League recently. That is what killed it. Both Movie and uh, Harang 2 went for gateway first builds and got slaughtered. Now Movie, why would Movie go for a gateway first build against Zerg? He's already so good against Zerg, why would he do that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, since Coach Cho left that team, that uh, the, the coach reasoning, I just can't figure out the reasoning for some of the choices they go for. And all right, the Nexus is up for Stork. He put down his Forge first, so he's going to be able to put down a cannon to deal with the initial Zerglings. And Hydra decided to expand out for his second base. He expanded outwardly for that base, and it's good for a Zerg player to kind of uh, do this, to go for the third base kind of in an arc, circling the Protoss player. So if the Protoss goes for one of their other bases, they can just go through that little runway in the middle of the map uh, snipe shuttles snipe corsairs uh, down through that area makes it a lot easier to defend something like that the cannon and the gateway i think coming up for stork um, inside of his natural expansion now i often take a lot of predictions from stork fanboys because i'm a stork fanboy myself i am very biased everyone knows that uh, but let's get one from a hard hardcore hydra fan here's one from the clon nine writes Hydra is so good, he made me change races from T to Z. Wow. I think the best Zerg and Terran and Brood War face each other in this group. 
will be an epic match, and I pray for Hydra and Stork to move on, just to make this OSL more interesting and not too ZVT heavy. But it will be Hydra and Flash anyway. Laying it down. But yeah, I can't complain about Terran vs. Zerg that much, because as I've admitted, Terran vs. Zerg is my favorite matchup these days. It used to be Protoss vs. Zerg, but Terran vs. Zerg is so freaking interesting these days. So many things have been happening, the metagame's been shifting, queens have become almost standard. I mean, how ridiculous is that? There are so many options for both players in that matchup that I just gotta say that Zerg vs. Terran is my favorite matchup these days. I, I have a feeling that uh, Zerg vs. Protoss will get there soon enough once Protoss has pulled their heads out of their butts, start realizing uh, that they need to go for lots and lots of gateways, because it always works out when they go for lots of gateways, and it never works out when they don't. So yes. I've been thinking, I was uh, researching the PVZs on this map lately as Stork is trying to get in there, find the next building, find the lair, and whatnot. I don't, I'm not sure if he was able to scout that third base or not. Well, technically the second base, I guess, up at the 2 o'clock position to see if the lair was up there. But if he hasn't seen the lair yet, he might end up putting it... Oh, the Hydra list in coming up and see if Hydra, Hydra does it. He gets rid of the scout, meaning he'll be able to push the front with Hydras. But he went for the lair first. So I think it's going to be a drop play from Hydra. Yeah, he went for the lair first, meaning he's going to try to get those uh, drop upgrades going. Could be a slow drop, which would be absolutely ridiculous. And it's actually... Uh, uh, looking at PVZs in the past, Protoss players, for some reason, don't check to the uh, back behind their bases looking for drops like this. So uh, this could definitely hurt Stork a lot. And Stork is going for his robotics facility first, meaning he's going to try to do Corsair Reaver. And I was going to mention this just a second ago that, yeah, I've been looking back on the PVZs on this map. And er er almost every time that a Protoss player has gone for Corsair Reaver, they failed. Because it's just inviting the Zerg player to build lots and lots of Hydras and bust down their front door or drop like I think that Hydra is going to do. That lair could have been for a fake out, but I'm not even sure if Stork saw the lair. No, the Overlords are in position. Yeah, Overlords in position to drop Zerglings and Hydras inside of that main. So this could be bad times for Stork. He is teching up, meaning he'll have fewer troops on the low ground. Stork sees this, though. He sees this. With, he sees the Overlord going to drop Zerglings inside of his main. I think he sees this. He's not pulling back with his troops, I don't think. I don't see the troops coming back yet for Stork. Yeah, he was fending back the Hydralis outside of his front, but now he's got to deal with these freaking Zerglings inside of his main. Kind of a cheesy play from Hydra, but uh, this could end up working out great if Stork can't get enough cannons inside of his main. Now Stork has got to just cannon up his main because uh, this is what Hydra is going to be focused on. He's going to go right for the main. And since Stork was teching up so much, he's just not going to have the troop on the ground to deal with this. Yeah, so Stork, he's got to take down Overlords. That's what he's trying to do. Uh, yeah, I think he should probably focus on the Overlords that are to the southern side of his bases. Not sure if Hydra's going to be able to drop too many more troops inside the main until he gets the speed upgrade for the Overlords, which is probably what he's working on right now. He doesn't have any more Overlords set up for a slow drop. So he is probably working on the speed upgrade now uh, to drop even more troops inside of that main. This is going to be a nightmare for Stork if he doesn't cannon up. He's trying to cannon up, uh, trying to build his observatory uh, just in case Hydra goes for lurkers or anything to drop inside the main. That could be a nightmare too. So he is thinking ahead, but going for a Corsair Reaver build puts you at way fewer units than you need to fight back a big Hydralist attack like this. He's going to have to be very lucky with these Scarabs. Once Hydra, Hydra has the speed for his Overlords. Uh, Stork spots this, but he hasn't been able to do anything about these Overlords dropping inside of the main. Here, come, here comes a big attack now from Hydra. The Reaver crawling. I don't know why this Reaver is crawling inside the main. Stork needs to pick that up. Uh, get it to the front lines. Because his army is so small. Luckily for him, the probes are very good against Hydras. If he can't get back here with the right amount of Scarabs, might be able to do this. The Corsair is taking uh, most of the hits as well. So Stork, if he focuses, I think he's going to be able to defend this. He's got to focus, though. Keep that Reaver alive. The Reaver's got to be alive. <laughs> oh, man. So Stork taking out most of the troops. Most of the troops. It looks like he's going to be able to clean this up. I think he will be able to clean up this attack. Um, somehow. I don't know how. 
but uh, fighting back with the probes. Uh, he's offending this back with the observers are pointing out that he isn't able to mine from his main while he's doing this. So, yeah, just going for Corsair Reaver again. He's got to pull in with his Reaver and keep every Reaver alive. If he loses a Reaver, this could be it for Stork because he needs those Scarabs to fight back this huge attack from Hydra. Hydra coming in now, trying to focus down on the Reavers. Uh, Stork picks up the Reaver, though. It's excellent micro from him. But, oh, he loses the shuttle, meaning the Reavers are going to go down. Yeah, both Reavers go down, and that's going to be a very big loss for Stork because I think he's still only working from one gateway. Might have actually built a couple more inside of his main, but he can't afford too many more because he techs so highly, uh, so quickly rather, to these uh, Reavers. Yeah, he has two more gateways, but only two. He needs about uh, five or six to fight back this attack, I think. It needs a pretty substantial ground army if he wants to defend against Hydra's attack. Yeah, he's trying to build more cannons to help himself out here a little bit. He, obviously, he does not have the Zealot speed yet, so he's using those kind of meat shields for the Scarabs to come in and clean this up. Uh, uh, to Stork's credit, he is still holding. He is still holding this. If he can hold out long enough, he might be, get, be able to get back in this game, even though he's lost so many probes inside of his main. Oh, no. Another Reaver goes down. That's so horrible. But it looks like the other gateways have kicked in somewhat for Stork. He's getting um, a, a, substantially amount, a substantial amount of Zealots out now. So he might be able to defend a little bit longer uh, before his Reaver comes in. But yeah, Hydra is focusing in on the probes. He's trying to snipe probes and uh, make use of this attack even more by sniping probes. Uh, might be going for another drop behind the natural expansion, it seems, with another Overlord over there. Yeah, looks like he's going to try to drop here. He's got to stay away from the cannons, though. But dropping behind the natural expansion is kind of a brilliant attack, actually, uh, from Hydra. You can definitely tell he planned this out. Uh, picking up his troops just to... Oh, he picks up the troops again to keep them away from the Scarab. Man, such good micro uh, from Hydra. That's a little bit ridiculous. But, yeah, you should be able to drop inside the main now with those Hydras, make this an even more powerful attack. Uh, the Spire coming up for Hydra, just to be able to deal with the Corsairs, I think. It could be a Mutalist Tech Switch, too, because, really, Stork does not have much anti-air going at all. He's focusing now on his ground army uh, to fight back everything, probably not pumping too many more Corsairs, uh, which is, he's definitely going to need soon. The Observer's looking all over the place. Stork's binding is uh, significantly... Sh uh, yeah, he does. He lost a lot of probes in that attack. A whole lot of probes. He had to pull a lot off the line to help himself attack as well. So Hydra looking for another opportune place. Oh, this is a Mutalist tech switch from Hydra. He, he built Mutas. And now he's going to try to go in with the Mutas to take down the Reavers. Making his Hydralis more effective. Because the Hydralis alone, I don't think you're going to be able to do this. There are quite a few Reavers out now. At least two Reavers that I saw. Three Reavers now. Four Stork. So really, the Hydras aren't going to be able to get much else done. So this is almost the perfect tech switch from Hydra. Uh, now that he's made Stork build all of this ground army, uh, the big ground army, now he's going to go for the jugular by taking out the Reavers um, Oh, with these mutas. I'm not sure if the mutas are going to be able to take down too much economy because of the cannons that are still around each of the bases. But uh, Hydra going for it anyway, trying to snipe the cannons and the reavers. Yeah, snipes the reaver. So one of the three reavers is gone. And it looks like Stork did not keep up with this Corsair production. Probably couldn't even afford it uh, by pumping all those reavers. So, yeah, Stork, this is not looking good. He's going to lose his final cannon inside of the main, sweating bullets, uh, probably reaching around, trying to find his glasses. He can't find them. His contacts pop out. Uh, contacts melt off his face. But, yeah, it looks like another big drop coming in from Hydra. This is a very aggressive game from Hydra. Very vicious and confident play from him. It looks like it's going to win him the game. Because Stork is moving out with a small amount of Zealots, but the Zealots are going to die pretty quickly to these Mutalists. So I really don't see a way that Stork can get back in this game unless he has the Doom Drop to end all Doom Drops inside the main or something, snipe all the important tech buildings. And he's moving out with Reavers now, getting some nice harassment. He was kind of locked down and wasn't able to do that earlier. Had to focus everything on defense. So this is what Stork wanted to do. This is what all Protoss players want to do with Cor Corsair Reaver on this map. But it seems that every time 
they go for it, it does not work out because of the Hydras. Yeah, Hydra pumping Hydras. Hydras, Hydras inside of that main still. Uh, probably going to be cleaned up. There are plenty of Zealots in there to clean that up. So Stork trying to take down more drones unsuccessfully. Dud Scarabs, it seems. And he's trying to transition into kind of standard play by pumping these Dragoons. Protoss usually gets Dragoons at this point uh, to fight back Lurkers, stuff like that. But, yeah, I just... Uh, Stork is going to have a tough time coming back. The longer he defends here, it doesn't even matter how long he defends. He's just lost so many probes, so much economy. Uh, yeah, I think the, the Reaver got quite a bit off on that one Scarab. Not much on that one. And uh, the Mutal is pulling inside the main now. The main is going to die. Stork cannot defend that main anymore. Uh, just because of the dual-pronged attack coming in from Hydra. The Exhale from Stork. Stork, why you got to do this, man? Why you got to do this to me? Uh, so the main going to be destroyed. Stork can do nothing, but he's trying to hold out. Uh, GG. And I fall over dead. Okay, I'm alive again. Hydra taking it with a very good play. I have to give credit to Hydra there. That was a great plan. Great plan. Great tech switch. Everything worked out perfectly for him in that game. And yet again, Corsair Reaver fails on Pathfinder. Why? So, okay. Let's move on to Group C. My heart will go on. <laughs> okay. Group C.